Oh, okay. So tell me, what is Gosney today? <sighs> Tonight. <laughs> um, <laughs> ambulance. Low self esteem. I threw myself into the moon. Life so incredibly <laughs> I'm Tom Gosney. I was a really happy young kid. I enjoyed living in a world where we didn't have social, getting outside, building dens, loved constructing, love engineering. Having dyslexia and then going to a school when dyslexia wasn't really recognized and being in a classroom where you're like learning out of a textbook, I just don't learn that way. I'm like super practical, love building stuff, love visualizing things. So I think there was like a level of frustration in my early years at school. It was like challenging for me. I didn't really understand why I found it so difficult. And so I think that naturally just like led on to negative behavior through frustration. And then by the time I hit like secondary school, the age of 13, I sort of adopted this persona that seemed to get attention and that was popular. It just escalated. No um, consideration for the impact on my family. You know, we'd, we'd found like much harder drugs Mum took me into a, a rehabilitation centre when I was 16. And I so wasn't ready. I like, wasn't even remotely ready. I thought I was just like a young kid having fun and it was the normal, it's what everybody did. My addiction just got progressively worse. Because I was like trying to put it down, I would have like moments of sobriety and moments of clean, and then it would come back full force. It went from being reckless and fun to like self-destructive trying to control alcohol abuse as well as drug abuse and not being able to control it was just like super difficult, right? It's like not being in control of your actions. Like, right, I'm not drinking today. And then like, before I knew it, I was like, you know, click your fingers. And I was in the shop, Imperial bottle, a litre of vodka, crying, drinking it in the queue before I paid for it. That's actually where the like addiction really became real for me. It wasn't fun anymore. It was just like super, super difficult. There was like a key moment. I got jumped by it, like seven or eight guys, got all my teeth kicked out at the bottom of my mouth, got my like eye socket was smashed. They cracked my skull. They like beat the out of me. I remember I, um, I picked my teeth up, four of my teeth up off the ground, off the pavement and like put them in my pocket and the like, ambulance took me to hospital. You know, getting attacked was like, they always say in treatment and in rehabilitation that there needs to be a rock bottom. And that was it, you know, and I was just like, I'm done. Day one clean time for me, like what I celebrate is February the 3rd. You know, that was like, February the 2nd was the last day I ever drank. You know, February the 3rd was, <laughs> yeah, the most horrific day of being sober for the first time. Significant withdrawals, DTs, like heavy shakes, couldn't walk, all that stuff. It was like savage, man. Um, and then that's when the, like, the real work truly started in treatment of like truly understanding and learning about myself. It's just, there's so much stuff about myself that I didn't know that I'd learned through the process of going in there. I sort of always knew that there was like significant potential with me. I just didn't know how to channel it. You know, a large element of it was like wanting a better life for myself, not wanting to lose my life young wanting to make amends to my parents, my loved ones, my family. Um, and then like an element of me, like wanting to prove every, every single person wrong that said I'd amount to and that I was like a waste of space. Do you know what I mean? And so it was like a little bit of a driver as well. Leaving treatment was hard, right? I, um, I, um, I thought it was gonna be easier than it was. And it wasn't, it was brutal. Probably the most vulnerable I'd ever felt and the most lonely I'd ever felt in my life. No matter how many people are really close to you and love you, it was really, really hard to come out and like not really have an idea of a direction that I wanted to go. I threw myself into cooking and for me that was like therapy, right? Like food gave me something that I could relate to and it gave me something that I could be social around. And so like that for me was like a, a little beacon of light in a really vulnerable time. And so. It was just an experience, right? It was a new experience for me to be able to like do something with my friends 
that we all just like lost ourselves in doing and like you open and create your own food you cook it in the oven you bring it out and it's like you're proud of it right it's like your creation it was like that was super special making pizzas was so fun and like we need to we need to make better pizzas like they need to be rad like how do we do that and so i i jumped online and started googling pizza ovens this was probably in like 2009 didn't even get the engineering of it right. I sort of hand built this brick oven and it got hot and then we cooked a pizza in it. it cooked in like 45 seconds and my mind was blown. It was insane. It was like cooking it next to a fire anyway was so unbelievably visceral, primal experience. It was like, it completely changed our social dynamics. The oven had made such an impact on my sort of immediate social circle that quite quickly my friends were asking me, can you build me one? I don't really want to work for someone else. You know, I want to be in control of my own destiny. I work hard, I've got vision, I've got drive, I've got energy. I sort of realized that there had to be a way of like bringing Cooking With Fire to more people. And that was where the idea designing my own branded products that were more scalable was, was essentially born. 2011, we officially launched the new precast products. It was a stone bake oven company. And then we went on a journey, like learning about everything. I became infatuated by business. The idea of like designing a product, building a brand, marketing it. It was so grassroots, man. It was like, I knew nothing about any of it. I hadn't learned really anything in school. I spent probably the best part of six to nine months designing commercial oven architecture that we patented that gave us the ability to install giant commercial ovens in modular components that we could take through doorways. As soon as we launched that modular system, it was a whirlwind. The commercial oven business just went from a sort of standing start to being UK market leader within 12 months. And we were putting commercial ovens into establishments everywhere. It just completely changed the market. It's critically important for Gosney to have everything that we design and build works as well as it looks. We spent three years developing Rockbox. It was a category builder. This was a completely new product to the world. Portable stone ovens did not exist before Rockbox. We're in 2022 now and it's still the same products that we designed, that we launched day one, that we are still selling today. So that like obsession over aesthetic engineering and quality has just like held us in such good stead. The way that we've developed products at Gosney is like fusing tech with nature, disruptive tech approach to an outdoor product, but like that nature's given a hug to. Do you know what I mean? It's like mega. So many dichotomies built for the dome, right? It's like sensory cooking elements. It's about cooking with fire. It's about taste, it's flavor. I didn't want it just to be completely modern, overly masculine and feel like a gadget. It has to pay credence to its ancient heritage of being a true wood-fired oven, right? But it has to feel modern for us to, to innovate in the space. Surface level, Gosney designs beautiful products, like go a level deeper. Gosney allows people to invest in a lifestyle that they didn't have before, which can fundamentally change the way they live. Our mission at Gosney is to change the way the world cooks outdoors. We're done. Hey, I'm Tom Gosney, founder of Gosney. That sounds terrible. Uh, how about... <laughs>